Crawford versus Spence. Let's get into it. Okay, so the long-awaited, highly anticipated super fight between the two top welterweights in the world of boxing, Earl The Truth Spence versus Terrence Bud Crawford, uh, finally took place, and it was worth the wait. I know a lot of us boxing fans have been asking for this fight for the better part of five years. We've had a lot of false starts and, and negotiation breakdowns, but the fight was signed and it actually came to pass. And this was akin to uh, Mayweather versus Pacquiao or Hearns versus uh, Leonard, all the greatest welterweight matchups in boxing history. This was primed to be up there on that level of great welterweight matchups in the history of boxing. And my prediction going into it was that Errol Spence would have enough to defeat Bud Crawford. I didn't think there would be a knockout. I wrongfully thought that Spence would be the stronger fighter. And um, I didn't have any specific reason. I like both fighters. They're both excellent boxers and, and world champions uh, for a reason. So I thought that, uh, you know, all things being equal, I thought that maybe it seemed like Errol was was in a really calm headspace, but I think I was misinterpreting uh, what I looked at as sort of a zen, cal zen calmness was maybe actually a little bit of uh, trepidation. People were saying that he looked shook and um, refused to see it that way. And it turns out, that I don't think he was scared because look at the way he fought. Even after he suffered the knock, the first one in the second round, it was already starting to look bad for him that early on in the fight. He just kept coming forward. He never adjusted his game plan, and that's what was surprising to me. Um, I think that at one point, you know, maybe they were equal, but something happened over the last year or two years where um, Spence hasn't really been all that active, and Bud has been a little bit more active, but all we had to go on was their common opponents from the past, Kel Brook, who Spence beat first before Bud Crawford got to him, and also um, you had a Sean Porter who Spence defeated before Bud Crawford got to him. So based on the two common opponents that we knew about on that level, there was two similar outcomes. Um, Spence did suffer that car accident after the Porter fight, which had him out for uh, a year, but he came back and he secured a couple good wins, but he didn't fight anybody like Bud Crawford. So why did Crawford dominate? He didn't just win. Even if you picked him to win, not many of you picked him to dominate in that fashion. Like I said earlier, Spence, once he got knocked down in the second, he didn't adjust his game. Crawford didn't even have to do it. Crawford just had to let Spence come to him. Spence was coming forward. Um, you know, he, was, he fought very brave. He showed a lot of heart, but it wasn't a very smart tactic of him. He was coming forward. His jab was not accurate. His timing was off and give the credit to Bud Crawford for throwing his timing off. I mean, that's kind of what you have to do to be a good defensive uh, fighter and a, and a, a smart counter puncher. Uh, Crawford was just letting Spence come to him. Spence was throwing, like Spence couldn't hit him with anything. It seemed like, I know he landed 90 something punches, but it was a very low percentage of the punches he actually threw. Where on the other hand, Crawford was, uh, was at about a 50% accuracy rate with the punches he threw, and he was throwing a lot of power shots. He was landing over Spence's jab. He was going underneath. He was digging to the body, uppercuts. I mean, the whole entire arsenal Crawford unleashed upon Spence. There was nothing that Spence could do that Crawford didn't have an answer for. And although the fight lasted until the ninth round where uh, Spence was eventually stopped, I mean, for the entirety of the fight, it was just... It was lopsided. It was one-sided. And the only thing that kept Errol in there was his tremendous heart and his will to persevere and continue. He says he wants to activate a rematch clause. And um, actually, I think he should consider retirement. I know it's his only loss, but he was beaten so badly. Um, I don't see any way that he could beat Crawford. There's just nothing that he could do that to, to, to derail the T Bud Crawford uh, Express because Crawford took this challenge and he elevated to the next level. He he rose way above where he was to a whole nother world class elite level that puts him in the 
in the pantheon of the great welterweights of boxing history that we've seen before. You might be able to say with a performance like that that he could be capable of beating any welterweight from any era. I mean, it's a it's an argument, it's a debate that could be had, but with the with the precision of his jab, the, the strength, the accuracy of that jab. The counter punch and punching over Spence's jab. The angle that he needed to take, his ability to keep Spence at a distance and away from trying to stay close and get in. He dominated on the inside. He dominated at range. He dominated in the boxing. He dominated in the slugging. There was not any facet of that game where Crawford didn't look vastly superior to Spence. And that's that's not a diss against Spence. That's not a knock against Spence. Spence, uh, on Saturday night, probably could have beat most other welterweights, but Crawford isn't the one. Crawford came prepared. He came ready. I was wrong in my prediction. I don't have a problem saying that. I'm not supposed to be like the sports Nostradamus. That's exactly what my show was called. I'm no expert because I'm an armchair analyst just like you guys. I just uh, have an opinion and have a, an interest in putting out videos about this all of our favorite distractions in the sports world, you know. Honestly, Thurman's out there calling for a fight with uh, with Bud, and I wouldn't mind that. Thurman hasn't re been really active these last few years, but you know what? Any other top welterweight in the top 10, top 5 would be a better opponent, in my opinion, than uh, than uh, a rematch with Errol Spence. There was, a, in the 7th round, a little exchange between... Uh, Crawford and Charlo after he had knocked Spence down. That might be an interesting fight at 154. But uh, right now, the sky's the limits for Bud Crawford. And um, I don't think he has to do much more to cement his legacy in boxing history. A couple more big fights, mega fights. If he wins and wins in impressive fashion, he could uh, go ahead and call it a career. He's already accomplished everything. He unified all the belts, all four belts in the four belt era. He unified them in the welterweight division. And that was just an elite level performance. I mean, if you haven't seen it, try to get a hold of it, watch the highlights, do whatever you gotta do, but it just, it was utter dominance. And I don't think anybody expected that. I mean, earlier this week, we had Naoya, Naoya in a way, defeat uh, Stephen Fulton in similar fashion, just like one champion getting utterly outclassed and demolished by another champion. And that's not to take anything away from the champions that lost this week. It's only to say that the guys that won are just so skilled in their craft, are so superior, so technically sound, so quick, and so strong, and so durable, that even the punches that do happen to get through didn't have the same effect that they normally had on the opponents. So when Spence did actually get some hits off on Bud, which felt like it never happened, obviously it happened, but it seemed like it never did, it's because it didn't have any effect. It didn't, it didn't change the way Bud had to think about anything he already had planned. There was just like a small little bump in the road. Like there was no nothing that Spence could do to create a big enough obstacle for Crawford to have to uh, audible and change his game plan. It was just a workman, workman-like performance. Uh, he did it with the, with, the, with the seriousness and the focus and the dedication. But you know inside he had that burning passion to want to just prove his detractors, his doubters wrong. And to, and to achieve his lifelong goal of being an undisputed champion. So hats off to T. Bud Crawford. That was an amazing performance. Boxing masterclass. Um, it really doesn't get better than that. It really does not get better than that. Because he saved his finest performance for his biggest hour. That is the definition of clutch. So Terrence Bud Crawford, whatever is next for him, whether it's at 147 or 154, whoever his opponent is, um, I don't know probably better train their ass off and pray for some sort of miracle because it's going to take, I think, a miracle at this point in T. Bud Crawford's career for one of these welterweights that exists out there to defeat him. I'm no expert. I just call it how I say it. You tell me what you think down in the comments. Who would be a good opponent for uh, Crawford? And should Spence continue on with his career? Should he retire? Because, I mean, does he need the money? That was that was brutal. That was a brutal beatdown. Um he had heart. He didn't want to go down. He didn't want to stay down, but he got his ass kicked. And some fighters are never the same after, after certain beatings. Like fighting takes a lot out of people. That's why it's not an easy career path for sportsmen to take. So maybe he should consider his health. He already survived, miraculously survived that accident way back, a few years back. Um, 
Some say he shouldn't even have gotten back in the ring after that. So I think he uh, may have survived another car wreck this weekend. So, um, like I said, let me know what you think. Should Spence retire? Who should Crawford fight next? Uh, I'm no expert. I just call it how I see it. And until next time, you and oh.